had a number of excellent uh, presentation on the mega cities and, and the problems. So I just wanted to say a few things uh, about the situation uh, in India. Uh, in my earlier, younger career, I did you know, some extensive studies about the urbanization you know, uh, in Indian situation and mostly application of statistical and mathematical techniques in the structure of Indian urban systems. Uh, but the, now at this time I'm not involved, you know, occasionally involved in this area. So I just want to say a few comments. Uh, the main uh, summary of my paper will be 15 minutes, uh, is that whatever we are discussing here in urbanism, you know, is in the context of European and American systems of urbanization. And of course, you are discussing the question of the uh, you know, uh, Chinese systems here. But the situation in India, conditions, type of things we have in India is quite different. So we need a different uh, paradigm, different types of thinking about the structure of urbanization in India, which is not necessarily the same as which we are discussing here and other places in the context of European and US system, even the Chinese system is in line somehow with the European and US system because of the different type of political economy in China as compared to India. This is the main thing, and I just want to say a few things, and a number of points with respect to globalization, uh, the uh, urbanization in India. Uh, first of all, a a new urban revolution is, has begun, and we have, uh, last decade, have witnessed the emergence of the, and the never seen growth of a number of mega cities with more than 9 million inhabitants, most of them being located in the less developed countries. On the other side, the globalization of post industrial economy generates a new urban spatial organization where a few number of cities concentrate in a disproportionate part of the economic power, creation and decision control. These global cities, these global cities or the world cities or world metropolis, most of the largest cities are in the less developed countries, while most of the powerful world cities are mainly located in developed countries. So I'm interested about the convergent process, which I'm not discussing in this lecture, convergent process of the, you know, uh, the uh, uh, megalopolis in a less developed countries, which are in the majority, whether they are leading to the world cities and what are the conditions, in what ways those sort of cities can converge you know, to the world cities, which is seven, eight world cities, mostly in the developed countries. But I'm not discussing the point here. I've used this question of the convergence of regions, uh, work done by Barrow and you know, uh, other people, Salah Martin, and I'm using those in the case of urban and regional system. They have done for economic system. I'm doing some work in the urban system. Then the uh, <coughs> next point, uh, urbanization, with respect to the data structure, the Indian uh, data, they're mostly from the uh, census definitions, as we have seen for the Chinese definitions and also definition in the United States, those census definitions are very strict. And then the question of data, which you get from satellites and agglomeration, is quite different. And there's a lot of you know, policy personal implication about the, what you mean by cities, what you mean by metropolitan regions, what you mean by you know, megalopolis, you know, from the point of view of data using the census data and the, you know, and the uh, satellite data. It's quite a difference. They're not the same. Now, the uh, next thing is this question of uh, uh, urbanization train, uh, 2001, uh, you know, here. But um, uh, in terms of the urbanization process in India, I think it is much smaller than compared to in China. For example, the 50% is the figure for China, in India is 31%. So, ur Indian urbanization process is much less 
compared to other countries, particularly the developing countries, is 31 percent. And also one distinctive feature of Indian urbanization is the growth of the big cities, the class one cities, class one cities which are more 100,000 or more population. But in China, that the question not only the big cities are growing, but also the medium-sized cities are also going very high, highly. But in India, that is not the case. Big cities, they're growing at the expense of the smaller cities. There's a main characteristics of Indian, of Indian city growth. Then the question of um, a growth pattern, I have used this question of uh, uh, data for Indian data for growth pattern and use the Pareto distributions, you know, the zip, you know, uh, the rank size rule. We have found out the rank size rule is only valid for Indian cities, you know, because of, of the, uh, for the population of one million or more. But the rank size rule does not apply to cities uh, which, you know, uh, between say, different types of cities, uh, different sizes of the cities, uh, type one cities and type two cities. For example, these are the different types of cities in India. Type uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Class one cities is 100,000 or more, you know, the different population sizes here. And they are growing very fast compared to, you know, other cities of smaller sizes. Then the, I just want to tell this, that the city system, the colonial history, the culture and religion and political economy and the globalization and the democratic system between federal and state government in such that that this question of liberalization after 1990, that the whole picture in urbanization in India is completely different than what we have seen in Europe or United States and even with what you, which you are seeing in China. It's quite different. Question of religion is very important. Religious cities, political economy, the question of the independent states and, and the central government, the question of voting, the question of free enterprise, question of political, you know, the freedom. Uh, these are a lot of implication, uh, you know, in, in the urban policies and urbanization in India. I do not know how, uh, how these things can be, more, you know, uh, aggregated and also we can generalize and we'll come up, I'm very sure, with a different type of urban theory, urbanization, as compared to e European, US, and even with the Chinese, Chinese pattern of society. The Chinese pattern in my system is very similar than the, what is happening in Europe and the United States because of the type of political economy we have in China as compared to India. Then the, uh, so inequality, this is the most, I'm more interested, uh, most important problem of urbanization in India is inequality, inequity, the question of conflict between different groups of people, different groups, religion, ethnicity, people of different states, languages, and this is the most important thing. And also the question of multinational corporations, their role in urbanization, this is very important because they are going to places which already very urbanized yeah, because they have to take the economics of scale and agglomeration. And what is happening because of that, other areas, other urban centers, other places which are not traditional you know, urban centers from the last hundred years, they are suffering. And this has great implication uh, for the stability of Indian political system and uh, stability of the people. Not only that, this urbanization which is created by the multinational corporations, they are uh, leading to exceedingly serious situation in urban systems within big cities. There's a lot of inequity, inequality, and disparity between people within uh, the big megalopolis uh, as a result of multinational and, and corporations and the forces of globalization. Then the uh, I discussed before this, uh, the, the, the rural and urban inequality in India, of course, uh, rural people are very poor, but uh, inequality within uh, the urban centers is much more in some sense than the rural and urban inequality. And the question of the political system, the, in the, before the, um, uh, the transformation from 1990 economic transformation, the role of the state was putting more emphasis on the, on the rural sectors and not the urban centers. So urban urbanization was not a very good thing 
in some judgment in the political leaders in the future, in, in the past. But now, after the globalization and the economy and the you know, uh, yeah, this question of uh, liberalization, the task, that thing has changed. You know, this is now more on urban centers, particularly the present Prime Minister of India. You know, his approach will be different than was the approach by the previous Congress, uh, Congress Party government. Economic power of the cities, uh, uh, this is of course, I have a lot of data, but I don't have time. Uh, of course, the, uh, India, the uh, uh, percentage of GDP, or oh, five minutes more. Oh, so uh, this, is, uh, this is a thing I just wanted to show you here. Migration, migration to rural to urbanization migration. Uh, this is a, a big factor in India, but, but different, the migration theories which you have used in regional science and the type of theories you have used in other migration studies is not valid for Indian situation. There are many other things, I would respect to the caste system, question of tribal people, how they affect the migration problems is not only the graffiti models and also the economic questions. So the probabilistic I told you before, and also this is very interesting, I don't have time to discuss uh, the, what is happening within the case studies from Delhi, Calcutta and Mumbai. You know, and what is happening really is a socio-economic polarization, marginalization, eviction of the poor, beggars and animals. And the question is having the uh, great inequality between people who have something and people do not have, even considering other factors like healthcare. So what is happening in Indian situation is not the urbanization, it is the, uh, the urbanization of the poor, urbanization of poverty. And that's the thing which is different when compared to uh, the modernity in Europe. Uh, in India, the modernity is diff the definition is different now. The compared to modernity of uh, urban centers in Europe, led to uh, modern modernity. But this is not the case in Indian situation. It's only for the very minority people, 20 percent, who are the expense of the poor people, you know, having their good times. So here, the uh, externality. I, some of you may have gone to India. The externality about the pollution, health, health care, and slums, 50% of Bombay slums, 35% of uh, Delhi slums, 40% of uh, uh, Kolkata slums. So it is, uh, you can call this a planet of slums, a planet of slums. So this is, this is the story of urbanization and Indian urbanization, which is quite different than compared to the story of urbanization in Europe, United States, and even in China. And that's the thing I want to know, what is the theory? What is the model? What is the future, the urban future in India? Not only with respect to population and migration or like that, question, question of political economy, the people and their, uh, you know, their aspirations and all these things together, can, we can build up some kind of a overall you know, system science model considering those things and which will be quite different than the things which you have seen in Europe uh, and also in uh, uh, United States and also compared to China. China's thing is very much, you know, in, in line what we have seen in Europe and, you know, no matter what you say, you know, align in, because of the decision-making structure of China is not the same as the decision-making structure in India. So here, uh, uh, the ideology, the, for example, urban growth, should he stop urban growth, you have two minutes, and the question of uh, multi role of multinational corporations. And what is, what is very important, the master plan, the city planners and urban planners in India, they're very much out of touch of people who are in economic planning or spatial planning. They're completely different. So what you need to do has to have a, you know, uh, you know integrated you know, uh, master plan involving more with economic mm -hmm. planning and spatial planning than physical planning. But in India, a tradition of planners uh, is, is quite different. The planners in India, they do not talk to people who are in economics, economic situation, but things are quite different now. So there's a need of integration of this type of people. And then this uh, question of land we talked before, I see the land-based income. Land uh, in big cities and so on and so forth is a, is a resource. 
and there are many ways which, can, which you can use as a resources. A land was not used as an item of production function in urban, uh, urban structure, urban production function, as Professor, uh, other professor was telling before. But I, what I'm saying, the land can be used as a productive factors, factors of production, if we have appropriate taxing and other uh, fiscal policies. So uh, at, uh, at the end, I just want to tell that the uh, main thing I want to say that we have a lot of discussion about megalopolis, a lot of discussion about uh, urban growth and all these things together, but the Indian urbanization, uh, Indian future, the way things are going in Indian urban centers is quite different, in different ways because of socioeconomic conditions, political situations, structure of government, the freedom, democracy, all like that. We need a different type of approach as compared to what we have seen in Europe, United States, and even in China. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat>